Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us for the Marks Group's Gold Mine Tips and Tricks webinar. We put on these uh, software webinars once a month. You can always look at our tips and tricks from ages past by going to blog.marksgroup.net. And today, we are looking at a few different things. We're going to look at how to view multiple contacts at once. Um, actually, a very handy trick, especially now that we're, we're coming into our, our holiday season. A lot of people like to um, print out labels for Christmas uh, cards. So I want to show you how, to, how you can view multiple contacts at once and, and use that functionality as a really nice, easy way to merge away duplicate records. We're also going to briefly go over how to spell check your outgoing email. This is a question that's come up uh, a couple of times for me in the last month or so. I just want to show you where that is and once you start using it, how to kind of live with it and deal with it. I'm going to show you how to, how to relink a history item to a different contact record. That's something actually that, that is only uh, available in the newer versions of Goldmine being 8.x and above. Uh, we're going to look at how to secure pick lists, those little F2 lookups that every field comes with. We're going to show you how to um, do things like force valid input or disallow blank input. And if we have some time, we're going to look at uh, how to carry over completion notes when completing history to, in order to get that next pending item going. All right, so let's jump right in. How to view multiple contact records at once. Well, for those of you who are on the new gold mine, being uh, if it looks just like this, the first thing I want to show you is that you can actually get rid of these tabs. You'll see here that everything is kind of a, a tab whenever I bring up a function of gold mine. What I can actually do is I, if I hit this little box with the four little boxes, what that does is that splits my, my windows into what are called child windows so you see that they are no longer on their own tabs this looks a lot like the old gold mine used to how you always kind of have these windows hanging out in the background in order to get back your tab view all you have to do is just maximize any one of these windows so for instance if I maximize the contact search center I'm back to my tabbed interface. I actually prefer the tabbed interface, uh, to be honest with you. I always got a little confused when I had all the child windows going on in the back of my older gold mine. But what's neat about this? Once you have these child windows working for you, what you can actually do is go to this window menu up here and select new contact window. And when I do that, Goldmine prompts me to search for somebody. Hey, who do you want to look at? Well, in this case, I want to look at Elmer Fudd. So now you can see here that I have two distinct contact records up on the screen at once. Um, something which, you know, the, the way that you kind of use Goldmine every day, this really isn't something that you really want to do. Because keep in mind that everything you do in Goldmine pretty much anything you select from this top level menu is in some way going to affect the quote unquote current contact record meaning the record that you're looking at right now in the case uh, where we have two contact records up like we do here the current or the active contact record is going to be the one in the foreground so just keep that in mind so whatever window is in the foreground is going to be our, our main active contact record now that I have both of these records available to me, it's actually, let me see if I have another Wiley e. Coyote record in here. Yes, I do. So let's imagine that we need to merge together a couple of these records. So we have a Wiley e. without a company, and we have a Wiley e. with a company. Um, why I'm going through the merge purge functionality right here is this, this is a nice way to kind of justify why you'd ever want to look at your two records at once. So now that I have these two records up at once, I can actually go to Tools, to Data Management, on to Merge Purge Records. And now that I have two contact records open, I can select Merge Opened Records. And what that does is that is going to merge together the two records that I have opened. The way the Merge Purge works, um, just to clarify, is that it's going to 
uh, merge the background record into the foreground record and it's going to consolidate all of the history all of the pending all of the fields so I go ahead and do this and I'm going to end up with one less Wiley Coyote contact let's do that again I'm going to bring up my new contact window and I'm going to look at the Wiley Coyote record one is a prospect one is a customer so let's say we want the customer to survive whenever we talk about merge purging and gold mine we always talk about what record is going to survive and in this case when we're merging opened records the foreground record will survive and the background record will be purged away so I hit yes now I'm left with only one Wiley Coyote record You'll see here that as I merge records together, I am left with these additional contacts that stick with the surviving record. And these represent all of the non-surviving records that have been merged in. So again, what, what I was just trying to show you guys is that we have the ability to go to Window, New Contact Window, and we can look at multiple records at once. Nice trick. <clears throat> let's look at spell checking outgoing email I want to get my contact records back to where they were so I just maximize you'll, you'll notice that I still have two open I can go ahead and I can just close Elmer Fudd and now I'm back to normal so let's give Wiley an email address okay so when I'm creating a new email address and you'll notice that how I got here to this create new email window my shortcut that I like to use is I click right on the email link here and that starts an email to the current contact record alternatively you can go to actions uh, do, 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 do email or that's the email uh, yeah uh, actions email or uh, actually my, my second favorite shortcut here is to hold down control shift and E control shift and E does the same thing what I'm trying to show you guys is that when I'm composing an email I always have a hard time with the word peace or maintenance or just words that are hard to spell for me for whatever stupid reason so what I'd like to do is actually enable my outgoing spell check the way I do that is I'm going to go into my options and anyone who's been around Goldmine for a while knows where to find these. These are in tools, options. For those of you who are on slightly older versions of Goldmine, it will be under the edit menu and then down to preferences, edit preferences or tools options. Brings up the same thing. These are your user options in Goldmine. And where we're going is the email tab and then we're going to go to more options lots of stuff to play with here don't be afraid to poke around that's how you learn and we're going to go to advanced and we're going to tell it to auto spell check before sending now in theory this is a great idea this is going to help me look a little more professional with my email correspondence it's going to help me uh, not misspell certain words but but for any of you who have, who have tried this out and have maybe abandoned it it is a bit to deal with at first let me demonstrate so if I enable that I hit OK I hit OK and at this point I'm just going to send a simple email actually I'm going to send it not to this email address because it'll just bounce back Send it to my own email address here. So now that I have my spell check enabled, I'm just going to send a very simple test email. And I'm not going to use any hard words. I just want to show you how the spell check works. So I'll go ahead and I, I go to send this. Oh, and it looks like I've trained my spell check far too well, so it didn't prompt me. But what I wanted, what I really wanted to show you guys was.
that when I start to check my spelling, it's going to obviously catch words that it doesn't know, that it thinks are misspelled. Now, a lot of these words are words that are not actually misspelled. They're actually people's names or things like gold mine and gold sink and SQL and maybe crystal reports if it's all one word. So what you're going to end up with is this little check spelling window that, that comes up and continually bothers you. Um, however, what I would recommend is that you kind of stick with this because when you get this check spelling, you can always add words or you can ignore them. When I add words to my dictionary, that means that the spell check will remember them and it will not prompt me again. So if I'm always emailing the Wiley, I want to go ahead and add that. So I add that and then it goes through the rest of the document. You'll see here that it didn't flag anything in my signature block, which is, which is actually kind of what I wanted to show you guys. I've actually trained my spell check, by which I mean I've gone through this check spelling multiple times and I've added all of the things that it didn't like, like CRM and like gold sink and like SQL. But again, I just want you to be aware that once you enable the spell check and once you start using it, it's going to catch everything that it thinks is misspelled. And it, for the most part, you can usually add it if it's a person's name or something in your signature block. Don't be afraid. But I, I, again, <clears throat> I have a lot of clients that enable this and say, well, Justin, it's, it's, it's prompting me. It's bothering me every time I go to send an email. Trust me, stick with it. It'll get better. As you keep adding words to your spell check dictionary, it's going to become more transparent. And after a while, it's just going to blink by and not ever going to notice it. So in this case, it's caught the misspelling. I can go ahead and double click. Just double click on what I think the actual word should be. And there it is. To be honest, I don't use spell check on my outgoing email. Um, consequently, every once in a while, I do send a misspelled word. Uh, hopefully, most of my misspelled words are words that are commonly misspelled and not easily caught. However, let's move on to relinking history. This is actually something that I've never gotten into on a tips and tricks before, and I'm kind of, I, I kind of surprised myself when I thought about it. How come I've never mentioned this? Because this is something very new to Goldmine. Back in the day, back when Goldmine was brown and gray instead of white and blue, 